Next up is Marcus. Okay, it looks good. Um, let's just watch this again with the volume down. Um, yeah, a good choice of artwork. Um, as a few people have mentioned, you'll need to paint out uh, the, you know, the pr image protection stuff. Um, uh, you know, you'll just have to really get in there and paint it out. Um, it shouldn't be too hard. You know, for some areas, like you could select an area and use um, content aware fill. I believe you just, I think it's like shift F5 in Photoshop. If you select a region, um, it should just, certain areas it'll do a better job than others, but try it, you know, as much as you can go around and, and see how much you can use that. Other areas, you're just going to have to really get in there and paint it to fix it in Photoshop. Uh, if you need, you know, help with that, I can demonstrate. Uh, just let me know. But yeah, obviously, you know, that's distracting. You'll have to clean that up. But it's a good image apart from, you know, the that stuff. And um, yeah, I think that the font you're using, I really like the uh, foreground movement uh, stuff here. That's really nice to have that as a separated foreground element. Um, it might be interesting to, you know, since you have this separated cactus, you could do some additional ones at different distances from the camera. So you know, this one's very close. Maybe there's one a little further away or something like that. You know, if you have, maybe, but if you have the whole cactus, um, if you don't, I would say that'd be harder to do. Um, yeah, and the sign looks good as well. Um, yeah, I mean, especially the cactus, at least the cactus and the sign could be at slightly different distances. It would be a little more interesting to have them exactly on the same plane. So, you know, the stuff that's closer could move, it just moves slightly faster than the stuff further away. So you could have it. I mean, even if you just, even if you didn't move these and just change the speed, they would appear to be at different distances from the camera, which would make it more interesting than have them, them move perfectly together. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I like that you've kind of shaped the lettering to the sign. That's good. And uh, yeah, I like that we actually see through the holes. That's kind of cool rather than just seeing black or something like that, you know, through to the other side, or at least it appears that way. Um, it's good. Yeah, so I think, you know, overall works out well. I think the biggest thing is painting that stuff out and then having the stuff move at different speeds would also improve this. Um, I think that the logo, you know, I don't know. I think this could use some work. I think that the... Some of the spacing looks off, like when I see the distance between the M and the K versus the K and the G, the K and the G are almost overlapping, but the M and the K have a big gap between them. Um, and I think that uh, the for the size of the lettering, the thickness of your outline is on the thick side. So, you know, when you have these blending together, but most of them not, you know, especially right here, that's not looking so great. So I think, um, you know what might help is if you just lose the outlines and just do, you know, solid text, um, because I think you'll run into less issues with the spacing then, and I think it just make for a cleaner image. But all that said, I don't know, it also, it seems pretty, I don't know, vanilla, like you could do something more conceptual with it, like you know, like that there's some sort of more of an idea behind it. It just seems pretty simple now. It's not bad. It's just not, I'm not left with any particular impression. So it'd be interesting to kind of, I don't know, spread your wings a little bit and try something a little edgier, more creative. But, but anyways, if you're going to stick with this, that's fine. I think it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, okay. Next up is Brittany.
Okay. I uh, like that, how the uh, battle is timed to the um, to the edits. Um, and it goes well with the theme of the title. Uh, I think um, I would choose a different font. It looks very kind of basic and there's some funny spacing issues like in this area looks tighter um so yeah just try some different fonts i don't it doesn't really say anything and and you might want to come up with more of like a logo for it and then um it's an interesting clock tower but if you're going for a western theme um you know you might come up with a, a simpler clock that you might find in a western town versus this which you know is, I don't know what where that clock tower is but it reminds me of Big Ben or something like that so and so you know if this is related to the film and the title of the film and it's supposed to be a western this is obviously not the kind of clock tower that you would find in a western um, so I'd go for a different one the other idea I had was uh, um, you know with each cut if you you know, gotten with Photoshop and you painted the hands to be in slightly different positions, you could, you know, have it tick with each cut. And I think that would be more interesting than just the, the still image so that it was, you know, the time was moving forward uh, rather than just being at the, you know, at the noon time. So, um, yeah, just a few ideas. So, yeah, I think you could keep going. I think more of a logo uh um better font and some kind of animation on the clock and maybe even choosing a different clock tower altogether next up is alina Okay, so a lot of um, interesting elements in here. Um, I think the, let's just go from the start. It's a good choice of background and I like how you match the, uh, you know, the colors of the background and the snake. Um, the, uh, generally it's felt that, um, I mean, there's always exceptions to everything, but drop shadows are sort of frowned upon these days it has kind of like a an amateurish look to it so i would see if you can do this without the drop shadow and further even even no outline either if you can just do the text without outline and without drop shadow it looks you know if you look at a lot of movie titles you'll be hard pressed to find one with a drop shadow like that and then the outline would also be kind of rare and this font looks a little bit, I don't know, default or something. I don't know which font it is, but it looks, I, I feel like you want something with a little more style, a little something that says a little bit more. Um, you know, it almost looks like it could be Times New Roman or something. It's probably not, but I'm just saying it looks a little sort of vanilla. Um, as far as the animation of the snake, um, So that zoom in, it, it, it's it's very fast and then um, goes away really quickly. So I might slow it down a bit and, uh, you know, you could, if you want it to finish sooner, you could have it start sooner too. So maybe, you know, maybe the snake comes in a little earlier and then finishes earlier also, or finishes at the same time so that it can be move a little slower. One thing I wanted to show you, and I think this would be helpful for everyone, is uh, motion blur. So you can do this with any layer. I'll, I'm just gonna make a solid for a simple example, layer, new, solid. And I'll just, yeah, I'll just do this little square. And um, I'll hit uh, P for position and just uh, keyframe it here and go forward a little bit and keyframe it there and let's just uh, end the area there and so I've got a very simple animation here and there's no motion blur 
and uh, turning on motion blur it's, it's two steps um, first uh, this button enables motion blur for all the layers so it's kind of globally turning motion blur on or off and then you have to turn it on per layer which is this button right here and immediately you can see that there's motion blur so um, kind of look at the movement there with motion blur on and then let's turn it off I'll just do it off globally and look at it there it has kind of a jumpier look so it sort of looks smoother when you turn it on the other thing um, part of the reason I brought this up for yours is that uh, the uh, the resolution of the snake image doesn't really hold up that well in close-up we can really see kind of the pixelation and stuff but if you had motion blur on you know we wouldn't be able to tell um, it would just be like a smooth blur and so it would you know it would it would work out okay so um, okay and again maybe different font and if you're stretching your fonts it looks like you might be stretching your fonts stretching your fonts is another sort of no-no in design that's it's frowned upon as well um, I like the guns coming in I think you could clean up your you know you you cut these out and I can really see especially right here you know you really need to get in there and and clean up your cutting out job here as well and there as well so um, really get in there and clean that stuff up um, yeah I mean I can see here there there so clean out the, clean up the cut out, cutting out job and again um, stay away from the outlines if possible and uh, don't stretch your font and again like try a different font the other thing is the um, how close you are to the edge of the frame and also not centered so oh I guess it's stretching to centered but I, I think that's not it's just the animation looks a little odd so because I guess what I would say if you were going to do that spreading out thing I would start centered and spread out towards the edges rather than start at one side and spread out to the other um, but the other thing I was going to show is in After Effects. Um, there's something called a title safe. Where is it? Is it under here? Title action safe. So this this square here is what's called um, title safe, and this bigger square is what's called action safe. And it's a, honestly it's a little bit more of a relic of the past because on old tube television sets um, they actually the the nature of the television set actually cropped the image somewhat depending on the television set you had and um, so you you had to to be safe you had to stay away from the edges because they might get cropped um, I don't think new flat screens really have that issue as much I think they show 100% of the image mostly maybe some of them crop it a little bit but it's still kind of a good guideline, you know, just just to not let your text get quite so close to the edge from just a design point of view. So as a guideline, you know, this outside edge, you know, don't have any important action outside of that. And this inside one uh, don't have your titles outside of that. The other thing is for the smoke background, see if you can find a nice, you know, video of smoke. You could probably, you know, pull something off of YouTube. There's like free YouTube downloader plugins for Firefox so you could just find some I don't know cigarette smoke on black YouTube video and download it and throw that in the background and I think that would look a lot more interesting than just a still image so um, that would be another improvement okay next up is Amelia oops oh, sorry so All right, so um, first off, the um, yeah the logo looks good. I think it's a nice, clean design, and um, it works. Fine. 
fine as a logo. I mean, you could have done some more animation type thing if you wanted to. Maybe, maybe like the three diagonal lines sort of, I don't know, somehow animate in and come together, and then the other things form between them to put it together. So th there is an opportunity to animate that if you want to, um, to kind of take it to the next level. It's just a good, clean choice of fonts. I think that your um, couple things is that it's it's a bit tricky to have an image with is that ice or water? Maybe it's all ice. Well, it looks like this part's liquid water. So when you have something that you know is is water, unless it's frozen all the way across, I'm having trouble telling. But if it's water and it's not moving, that's kind of tricky. So you might be able to find like a still image of a or something in the evening but let's maybe it's okay like that but I think um, the firefly idea is a good one it's just that there's way 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 too many of them um, you know just just a, a few would be interesting rather than um, you know hundreds and also to get a sense of depth so you could, what I would say is, is just hand animate a few of them and what would make it, you know, take your time with it. So for example, you could have one and make the, the glowing dot a little bit bigger and like have it fly and, and put, make a layer where you cut out these reeds, for example, and it flies behind those to give it some depth. And then maybe there's much smaller ones that are just really little dots that are further away. And then maybe some of these you kind of you animate it and then you duplicate the layer and you flip it and then blur it so that it looks like the reflection um, moving over the ground. Let me I'll, let me see if I can do something like that real quick. Hold on. So um, I'll start with a, actually I think I'll use the shape um, ellipse tool and I'll just let's do white and uh, let's see what that looks like without the okay great and then uh, I'm gonna animate this and I um, mentioned this uh, in the discussion but you can use this tool called uh, motion sketch where is it okay where did it go? There we go. So it'll just move with my mouth. So I do start capture and then I'm going to drag it and kind of, you know, move around in the sort of jerky fashion of a firefly. Then let's take a look. I think that's maybe a little bit too fast and crazy. So. I can just record over it. It only starts recording as soon as you click on it, so. Okay, something like that. It's got that kind of rapid and random fly looking movement. And so then what I was saying was uh, how I showed earlier, you know, turning on motion blur, which is gonna help this also, if we look at that. You might notice it. Let's deselect on frames like that. And then let's take uh, the whole layer and duplicate it. And let's see if we can do. Uh, so I'll use um, Effect Distort and um, Corner Pin. And I kind of want to flip it upside down, so I'll kind of make these uh, opposite. You know, I'll. I'll move this one down, that one back up, and then just sort of uh, give it some perspective. Whoops. Uh, so that it's kind of getting wider and narrower there. Let's see how that looks. So that gives that impression that that one on the bottom is kind of a reflection of the one on the top. 
and then I can also uh, maybe take this and uh, put a blur on there um, just a regular old Gaussian blur just because it you know if it's on ice or water or something it'd be a little blurry and I think, you know, with the background image on there, and if that was like that yellow color, I think that would be believably, you know. So that's how I would go about it. I would do like a few of those uh, at, at different sizes where, the you know, the bigger ones are the ideas that are closer and the smaller ones are further away. And another thing about fireflies is they turn on and off. They kind of blink on and off. So you could also, you know, animate the opacity uh, up and down a little bit on these. I might, you know, combine them. You can combine them by selecting the two and doing a pre-comp thing. I don't know, Firefly 1 or something. And then, then just to make it easier, because then if you're going to do opacity, you can do uh, both of them at the same time. You can have them, you know, animate that up and down a little bit. You know, it can be mostly on. It's not there that long anyway, so it could be mostly on. That would be my approach, is to do just a few, maybe one appears and then another and then a few more, you know, and maybe you get up to 10 or 12, but not like 100. Next up is Henri. Okay. Oh, wait, we should, sorry, I didn't have the volume on. Let's do that one more time with the audio. I think you've got like the basic idea going on pretty well here. Um, I think that uh, to get this to the next level, um, if you could paint out the serial number on this using like the clone stamp tool in Photoshop, and then try um, like a bevel effect in Photoshop and kind of play with the blend modes a little bit. Um, I mean, I could try to do a quick demo of that. So I just did a screen snapshot here and, you know, as far as painting this out, um, just S for clone stamp tool and alt click and uh, maybe alt click here or something, you know, and just You know, you get the idea of painting those out. I'm just going to do one letter here. Um, let's type the letter B. And then I'm going to um, right mouse click and go into blending options. And I'll uh, change the fill opacity to zero to make it just a fill transparent. And then I'll put an effect on there like the bevel emboss. And uh, if we use um, chisel hard, might be better. Anyways, you can play with these and you know adjust the light angle to where you like it. You know, maybe something like that. And I think that's at least a little bit better. Um, you know, play with your how you like the shadows and, and highlights, you know, to where it looks like it's etched in there. So just play with the settings until you get a look you like, but I think that's going to be a little bit more believable, you know, than what you have. Uh, and you may want to get a little uh, closer to the, uh, to the words to be able to see them. I mean, I guess you have the perfect reference right there for, you know, for what these should look like, so you might want to try to match that a little bit. 
Um, but either way, I would paint those out and try to make those look more like they're etched in. And, uh, yeah, it's a good concept. I would cut out the bullets and have the whole bullet, if you're going to do the spinning thing, it would have the whole bullet spin rather than just the text on the bullet. Um, I like that other spinning you have going on. I think there's some funny animation at the end where they don't come to rest at the same time, so maybe like make sure you use easy ease on those keyframes in After Effects and, uh, and make sure they're timed to end on the same frame. or if you don't want to end the same frame, have it more significantly different. But right now, being so close and being slightly off makes it look like a kind of like a mistake. Next up is Cody. Let's try that again with sound. Okay, um, I think, yeah, I think you could do something more with the uh, logo, um, you know, it being called gunmetal, maybe involve a gun in the, in the logo at the beginning. Let me just turn the sound off now. Uh, yeah, the font looks, you know, sort of default looking vanilla. I think this font's really cool. Um, and I don't know if you did the illustration, but it's, you know, it's really nice and it's a really interesting font, so I think your color combinations work pretty well. Uh, I think that these gunshots work okay on these surfaces, but it looks kind of funny on the cactus because it looks, it looks like what a bullet would look at, like if it penetrated sheet metal or something. But for the cactus, I think you're going to want to you know, change that, and it may just be a question of, you know, turning it a darker green or sort of tinting the whole thing or something, and maybe not having a black hole in the middle, but maybe just a darker green, or I don't even know what color's inside of a cactus, but anyways, it'll be dark because the light won't hit it that well because it's a hole, so yeah, so like maybe a dark green or something, um, but right now it looks funny because it's like, oh, it's like the cactus is made out of metal or something. Um, So yeah, I would say main things, uh, try a more expressive font, get a, a, a real logo to start with, and then uh, fix the gunshot on the cactus, and yeah, it looks good. Next up is Jimmy. <laughs> start with, uh, it's, you know, it's a cool illustration and the text goes well with it. I think it's a bit too crowded on the right side. You might want to maybe take the alternative and put it on top of the Sin Studios. Um, and you also might want to consider, you can use a different font for the uh, you know, the production company name and the presents, you don't have to, but it's like if Alternative Sin Studios Productions, which is kind of long, actually, maybe you just want to do Alternative Sins Studios or Alternative Sins Productions, but Alternative Sin Studios Productions is a bit long, so maybe cut out one of those two words and then, uh, yeah, and then just make it fit a little better, not so crowded to the edge. Try it without the drop shadow. So you might like it better. I think it would be a cleaner look. Uh, I was saying earlier, drop shadow is generally frowned upon these days. Um, and then you could use a different font for presents than you use for the company name. But 
you don't have to. Um, and then, yeah, I, I like this illustration. I think this looks a little weird. It, you might want to look at some reference of uh, Tumbleweed just to get a sense of the timing and movement to make it more believable. And maybe get some transparency on that as well. Maybe make sure you do an easy ease on this text as it lands. Um, you mentioned in your post that you wanted to do more and didn't know how to do it, but you know I can't help much if I don't know exactly what you have in mind. So post a question. You know I'm I'm here to help. We're all here to help. So let us know what you want to achieve, and you know either describe it or show an example, whatever you can do, and we'll, we can give you a little bit more advice on that. Next up is Reese. Okay, uh, first thing I'm noticing is uh, it's really low resolution. Um, when I look at the uh, video inspector thing here, it says it's uh, 352 by 198, and that's quite a small. Um, and I don't know if you've worked at that size or if you shrunk it down when you rendered it out, but either way, it's pretty small to look at now. So if you were working in that size, you need to work bigger. And if you rendered it out that size, you need to render it out full size so it doesn't look all pixelated. Um, the, uh, you know, so you've got some good animation in here, you know, the kind of bouncy stuff that looks nice and uh, that's kind of fun. Um, the, uh, I think these colors are kind of tough. Um, it's just, I would, I would stay away from outlines on text in general, but the, the blue and the purple, like, I don't know, it's, it's very saturated and bright. I don't know, you might just try something simpler. So try it without outlines. Um, I think this works better because it doesn't seem to have outlines. Um, it's kind of low resolution so it's hard to tell what's going on but kind of I guess it does have outlines or it seems like it doesn't have outlines and then the outlines fade in so if you can stay away from outlines I would tend to say that's better and the other thing actually this this gray background really uh, does a lot better with the color in the foreground because I think part of what was hard about the blue and purple is there's a lot of different colors going on in the brick texture and then you have this like super saturated blue and super saturated purple and uh, it's, just, it's just a bit busy so maybe if instead maybe just keep this gray background the whole time and then maybe tone down the colors on that also and I think it could come together um, one thing you could try is when this this cartoon squashes down what can be nice is if it spreads out horizontally so if it could uh, you know so then it sort of maintains its volume and you get that kind of squash and stretch feel so you might want to try that you might want to try to have it start a little narrow on the board narrower on the board so there's a little more room to move and then as it squashes down, it spreads out to the side, uh, scales, you know, horizontally to get the squash and stretch feel. And uh, yeah, maybe try a different font for presents. Um, I think the, again, it might play better with a full resolution, but right now the, um, this text with the transparency and the drop shadow and the different colors and all that it's just a bit busy and kind of hard to read the letters aren't that solid so um, at the very least maybe choose something without transparency but I think yeah there's sort of a lot going on with the text that makes it a bit busy and hard to read so I think the the concept is good and the movements are um, all right. You know I like the letters flying in. You might want to turn on motion blur. I demonstrated that earlier in this video, and maybe you use easy ease on the letters so they, or they can land hard. It's fine. They don't have to ease out. But um, um, 
yeah, maybe try a different font, or, or if you're going to use this font, do it in such a way that it doesn't have transparency on it, but rather has solid in those areas. And I like that the, you know, the clock gets there just the right time. Okay, next up is Jasmine. <laughs> So the first thing that's catching my eye here is that uh, it looks really low resolution and I'm, I'm not sure if you worked with a very low resolution and then just scaled it up to full size or if you were working at a lower resolution and just rendered it out big, but uh, right now it's, it's a problem because it looks really pixelated. Um, you know, I'd be happy to look at your After Effects file if you send that along with all the source files you used. I can figure out what's going on. And there's some of that jumpiness, and I'm wondering if that has to do with the low resolution when they scale up or what, what's going on there. Um, I'm not sure what the, the tilt rotation is supposed to mean um, there. Conceptually, and I guess the the other thing is you're missing the. There should be a like a logo and company name on this as well. So yeah, I think the first thing is to make sure you're working with you know full resolution, um, and then f from there I think you could do another pass at the animation. I mean, actually, what you know when it zoomed in, it was it was all right, you know. I think that was fine. I think what was odd was this animation afterwards where it moves, because now, so, well, now it looks like, no, is it down show instead of show down? Like at that moment, um, it's kind of odd. So up up until here, you know, it was all right. And then it, it gets, a, the animation is a little strange there. So yeah, and then add the, t the logo with the company name and logo as well at the beginning. Next up is Siangri. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the audio again. All right. Yeah, it looks good. Um, I like the background. I think it's a really good image, and um, yeah, I think this text works well over that background. Um, yeah, the holster sliding in looks good. You could put a little kind of blurred shadow underneath that. Um, one way to do that is to duplicate the layer and then put a like a uh, a levels adjustment on it uh, to make it solid black, and then blur it and make sure it's stacked underneath those. And you can get a sort of a fake a drop shadow that way. There might be just like a drop shadow effect in there. Probably you could use instead. Um, I just thought this movement felt a little. I don't know, jerky for some reason. Uh, uh, I think motion blur is going to help a lot. So I demonstrated earlier how to do that. So go ahead and turn on motion blur. And I think uh, it'd be nice to see um, like a, a flash or maybe a bit of a gun flare here with the um, with each of the shots. And it would be great if you could uh, animate the trigger and the hammer with each gunshot as well, you know, cock it back and then pull the trigger and snap it forward with each shot. That would kind of help bring it to life a little bit more and then maybe a little smoke at the end would be a really nice touch. Consider, um, see if you like the text without the outlines, it might look it better. I think that, you know, while that looks good and clean, it's a bit you know, there's not really a logo or anything, you know, maybe think of some kind of iconic image for victory, um, you know, that's silhouetted or so, something. It, right now it looks, you know, it's just text. It's not, I wouldn't really call that a logo. It's just, a, it's just a text. So yeah, I think this part's working well for the most part. Um, motion blur, 
add some of those details in the movement, maybe some flash, maybe some smoke, and then work on the logo a little bit more. Next up is Ashley. That's really good. Um, just got a nice sense of movement with all the motion graphics. I felt like this kind of went, maybe it's some combination with all the text being at the angle and, and the wanted it's just a lot of text on the screen at once, and somehow I never felt myself actually reading the Oasis Studios Presents. Um, so maybe just like lose the words wanted. I think that's, you know, it's there's a sort of implication that that's a wanted poster without it, and that, that might help a little bit. Maybe hold a bit longer on that. Um, I'd be interested to see if anybody else has any thoughts on that. What is this doing in here? Like, um, I'm not sure why that would remain in there. Uh, is that, I mean, I can't imagine that's in the original image, is it? Anyways, either hide that or paint it out or whatever. It's kind of distracting. Um, yeah, that looks cool. I can see you're using motion blur. That's really good. And I like this, and I like the drift, but I kind of think that it crowds the edge a little bit. So maybe if it, when they zoom, you know, shoot out of the side, that they uh, they don't quite get as far, so they have a little bit more room to drift. Um, and I like how that all breaks up. That's really nice. Kind of splits in the middle. Well, I guess those things move off, those move off, and that moves off. But it works really well. Um, yeah, I think part of the way you can improve this is just make it happen way faster. You know, you've got that shatter thing, but it's a little, it's almost like slow motion. So if you can, I, I don't know what shadow effect you're moving, using, but if you can get them to move outward a lot more, that would help, and just move way faster and get mo more motion blur going on. And then uh, it just looks like super slow mo. Whereas like that backward background splatter hitting the wall doesn't seem slow mo. So anyways, I think if you speed that way up and have the glass shatter much further, much faster, you'll get away with it better. Um, and uh, yeah, this is good. I think that the one thing that bugged me was that I'm I'm kind of I I think that the uh, the movement of the text being different from the wall is a little I mean in general that can be good because it gives the illusion of depth but in this case it's a little tricky because then the bullet holes are staying in one place but the the text is drifting and so it's like it's moving behind the bullet holes and that kind of looks weird and then this fades before the other stuff fades so. Um, and you also might want to get those kind of the the little kind of damage marks around the bullet hole. Um, a lot of people have been using to kind of because um, they're just perfect circles. It looks a bit too clean. You want that kind of correct damage wood look around the holes. Um, would help. And then yeah, and just maybe kind of lock the movement of the your move to the background. Because it's not moving so much that I think that you're gaining much. You can just parent um, one to the other uh, to get it to move nicely with it. I don't know if you've looked at parenting, but um, just make a new. Uh, oh, let's use this one. It's fine. Um, if I, I'll just make a couple solids white one and um, blue and uh, there's a few different ways of parenting if we toggle switches modes here 
you use this little pick whip thing. Let's say I want the white one to move with the blue one, so I just drag this to that one. And now if I move this guy, uh, the white one will move with it. I can still move this. So I can animate this one separately. So this could be like the your move and like, you know, zooming in. But then if this has any movement on it, that'll move perfectly with it. So you might want to parent it. Uh, the other thing is the parenting things right here. So you can just, you don't have to use the whip, pick whip thing. You can also just, uh, just pick from the list here. It does the same thing.